Hey esteemed viewers, this is Salman Safi welcoming you to your own channel Safi Maxed. In this video, I would like to talk about the concept behind the construction of Schrodinger wave equation. To know about the motivation of Schrodinger wave equation for constructing this equation, I suggest you to watch my video as first part on the Schrodinger wave equation. So now let's move to the focus of this video. In his first attempt in the search of a fundamental equation, Schrodinger merged the classical electromagnetic equation with Einstein's photon theory and de Bry hypothesis, hoping that this way all the quantum mechanical properties experimentally observed would embed into a single equation. He started from this electromagnetic equation with t stand for time c for the speed of light x for the position and psi of of course represent the wave function obviously this is a one-dimensional differential equation with wave function psi of x in t moving with velocity c we know from our courses on electromagnetic theory that this equation satisfy a plane wave solution of the form psi of x in t equals a times exponent iota kx minus omega t. One can straight away verify by substituting equation 1 into equation a that the two sides agree with each other. Just do it as an assignment for yourself if you don't trust it. I'm sure you all are well familiar with this solution from your previous courses, especially on electromagnetic theory. Moreover, in equation 1, A stands for amplitude of the wave K for wave vectors and omega represent the angular frequency of the wave. Now, let us move to the most important part, the intuition of Schrodinger. Schrodinger thought that the particle behavior of photon can be encoded into equation A by replacing the angular frequency omega with energy through the Einstein equation for the energy of photon. That is, we can write E equals h bar nu multiplying and dividing this equation with 2 pi we can put this into the form h divided by 2 pi the whole multiplied with 2 pi nu and h over 2 pi of course is h bar and 2 pi nu equals the angular frequency omega so i can rewrite omega as omega equals e divided by h bar similarly schrodinger ingeniously encoded the wave behavior of particles in equation a by replacing the wave vector k in equation 2 with momentum through the use of de Bry hypothesis as we know p equals h divided by lambda again multiplying and dividing this equation with 2 pi we can write it as h divided by 2 pi times 2 pi divided by lambda now h over 2 pi obviously equal to h bar and 2 pi over lambda equals k so we can write this as h bar k and from that i can write k equals p divided by h bar substituting the values of omega and k from equation 2 and equation 3 into equation 1 the wave function becomes psi of x in t equals a times exponent with argument iota p times x minus e times t the whole divided by h bar now let me comment on a very important feature of equation 4 the wave function in equation 4 carries the information of the particle nature of photons and the wave nature of particles. How? Because this form of the wave function is obtained by using Einstein's equation for the particle nature of photons and the de Bry equation for the wave nature of particles. Let us see how can we extract this information from the wave function. 
To this end, let us first differentiate this equation with respect to time. So I can write that differentiation like this, this is partial psi over partial t equals a times partial over partial t of the whole exponent. And obviously, if I apply the differential with respect to time, I can rewrite the whole exponent as you see in the equation. And then differentiating the argument of the exponent with respect to time, <clears throat> the, the first part in the argument is obviously time independent. And the second part depends on time. So from that part, I can easily rewrite the whole wave function like a exponent with the argument gave you see. And I can rewrite the above equation as this one a exponent iota p times x minus e divide minus e times t divided by <coughs> h bar the whole multiplied with minus iota e divided by h bar this result is very problematic as the quantity inside the bracket is an imaginary quantity whereas for physical interpretation we need it to be real. This problem can be avoided if we differentiate the, this result with respect to time again. The second differentiation would again extract a quantity minus iota e divided by h bar as I have multiplied at the end. And that multiplicate and the multiplication of the last two terms obviously produces e squared divided by h bar squared, which in fact is a real quantity. So the second differentiation with respect to time of the wave function in fact reproduce the same wave function multiplied with e squared divided by h bar squared. Now watch what we have done. We have in fact extracted the quantity e which carries the information of the particle nature of photons. Similarly, let's see what we get by differentiating equation 4 twice with respect to x. Repeating the same procedure as above I can obtain the equation like this which is multiplied by iota p divided by h bar. Again that quantity is an imaginary quantity and we cannot assign some physical meaning to this. Therefore differentiating the above equation once more with respect to position would extract the same quantity as I have multiplied it at the end which is iota p divided by h bar and multiplying the quantities inside the brackets at the end would produce minus p square divided by h bar square multiplied with the same wave function psi of x and t. So the twice differentiation of the wave function with respect to position extract the information about the wave nature of particles. Let us see what we get by substituting these values into equation A. We get minus e squared divided by h bar square multiplied with the wave function psi of x and t equals minus p squared c squared divided by h bar squared multiplied with the same wave function. At both sides we have wave function multiplied by numbers so we can drop out the wave function and also can cancel out the h bar square and finally can express the equation as e square equal to pc whole squared. Wow! This is a very interesting result. To see its importance let me write the relativist equation of energy of particle. We know from relativity that the square of the energy equals pc whole square plus m naught c square whole square where m naught is in fact the rest mass energy which is zero for photons and substituting m naught equal to zero this equation reduces to e square pc square exactly what we obtain from the wave equation in other words Equation 5 simultaneously carries the information of particle nature of photon in terms of E and the information of wave nature of photon in terms of P. 
thus merging the electromagnetic wave equation with Einstein photons equation and the Bray hypothesis leads to very sensible and physically valid result. Now the next generic question that Schrodinger may have asked from himself is can we embed the fundamental quantum properties that is Einstein equation of energy of photons and the Bray equation for momentum into the time and position operators appearing in equation A? Fortunately the answer is yes. That is, equation A remains unchanged if we define the following operators. E equals iota h bar partial over partial t and P equals minus iota h bar partial over partial x. Note the hat on E and P in these equations. This is a common practice to differentiate a number from its corresponding operator in quantum mechanics. So you should use a hat for operators and numbers without hat. If we square these equation we get e square the operator e square equals minus h bar square partial square over partial t square and similarly the operator p square equals minus h bar square partial square over partial x square. Or we can rewrite these equations by taking the h bar to the left side and can express them like these two equations. Substituting these forms of the operators back into equation A, equation A can be put into the form minus operator E squared divided by h bar square multiplied with the wave function equals minus operator P times C whole squared divided by h bar squared times wave functions and obviously the h bar square at the two side can be dropped out and the equation finally takes the form the operator e squares times the wave function equals pc whole square times the wave function. This equation is the quantum version of classical electromagnetic wave for massless particles or for photons. I stop right here and will cover the rest part of this lecture in part 3 on Schrodinger wave equation. Oh, I almost forgot to remind you this.